Hey everybody, um, it's me, Tina. In this video, I want to talk about speaking in tongues. I'm very familiar about the gifts. Um, if you guys haven't, um, check out my video where I was explaining eternal life is not the gift, it's a blessing. Uh, faith is the work. Uh, check it out. It's not once saved, always saved, okay? Um, this is a continuous, uh, another segment on particular, um, I'm going to go in depth with the gifts. And this one is about, um, uh, we need the gifts. Um, we're in 1 Corinthians. I think, go uh, read it with me. Um, it talks about, it labels all the gifts. And I'm going to label a few. Dreams and vision. Interpretation, dream vision. Speaking tongue. Interpretation, dream, um, speaking tongues, Casting out demons. Working miracles. Discernment. Um, what else? Knowledge and wisdom. Okay. These these are um, some of the gifts. Okay. There's about a good eight to ten gifts. Okay. Not everybody. This is what I understand. I thought in the beginning everybody gets a gift. Okay. Just like a scripture. Oh, one's given this one. But I realized what God is saying when He talks about he, this is a thing. You got to go to God and have these teaching. Lest you go to the wrong ground, the wrong church, and get deceived, and you won't get nowhere in your spiritual walk. It won't proceed, it won't mature right, if you are not rooted on the, uh, um, the right ground. The right ground is to go to God, okay? Or somebody that truly has the Holy Spirit, that operate in these gifts, okay? And you, but you better have a gift of discernment, okay? Here's the thing. I was talking about, you know, check out my... Um, where I was talking about um, eternal life um, is not free. Um, without these gifts, you can't operate in serving God efficiently. Okay? Um, I have almost, if not all, the gifts. Okay? So it shows, it, God was getting me to understand, it's not everybody gets one or two. But everybody needs all the gifts to operate in God's kingdom efficiently. So God was telling me... Just like the body part. See, this is where God has used me to correct a lot of pastors. Okay, a lot of pastors are preaching and they don't have understanding. Okay, they need to go to God. They need to go, they need to talk to the Holy Spirit, speaking in tongues. Supernatural. The anointing, the oil. That's why five wise, five foolish. Okay, I don't go to a church no more. I go straight to the source. Okay, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Get on your knees. Okay. Seek him out. Uh, but you have to live a life of holiness. Without holiness, you can't see the Father. So if you're not repenting daily, turning from your wicked ways, you're going to have a hard time operating these gifts, doing God's work efficiently. So, um, like my hands. Okay? My hand is, uh, one is dream and the other interpretation. You have to have both to what? Hold stuff, do stuff efficiently like, like this. I have to hold this and it works together. Okay? Like my hands are working together to feed me. Right? That is what God is talking about. Um, For example, speaking in tongues. Okay? Speaking in tongues, same thing. It's my left feet and the, my right feet is interpretation of tongue. These are two separate gifts. You got to pray for both. Okay? If you have dreams and you don't have interpretation of dreams... You're going to think this, all this dream is a bunch of baloney, okay? That's why you have to pray for interpretation in tongue. Oh, okay, I get it, Lord. I get that. You're, <laughs> this is biblical. That you speak to your, uh, your disciples in dreams. In dreams, I keep you from the pit. God tells future events. Prophecy, okay? Prophecies are things are, that are told in speaking in tongues or in dreams and visions. Things to come. To tell to the world, okay? And if you're a born again believer, you're a pro you're a prophet. You know, if you're born conceived, God is gonna speak to you. God's gonna start giving you your dream, and which is prophecy. God give God gives us future event what's to prepare us, to warn us, to warn our family, okay? So in reality, when you're called and chosen, <coughs> I prayed for this and I didn't know what praying chosen is. I'm like, oh, this is what praying chosen is. Do the mission, uh, missionary work. So what happened is you need to pray both of the gifts. Dreams, interpretation, dream. Speak in tongues, interpretation, um, speaking in tongues. So, um, and then you're going to start seeing things, okay? Knowledge and wisdom. You got to pray for knowledge and wisdom, okay? So 
just like your right eye and your left eye, you know, you can't really, you can work with one, your, one of your eye, but it's better to have both eyes, you know, just same thing. Less, um, you have, okay, for instance, you might have the gift of dreams. The other person will have a gift of interpretation, but more likely they will have the gift of dreams before they have the gift of interpretation, if that makes sense. Um, if, if, if they're not, if they never have dreams before, how are they able to interpret other people's dream? Unless God is just strictly talking to them, um, you know, it, it's a possible thing, you know, um, er, everything's possible with God. But this is how I started out with, was, um, you know, the Bible talks about, I think it was e either in Peter or, um, or Acts somewhere. It talks about, um, the disciple lay the hands on and they start spanking in tongues and prophesy, okay? A lot of people had to have a hand of a what? Conceive, con uh, conceive Christian to light up their candles. You know how the light candle lights up and somebody hand on you, okay? That's one way you can see with the Holy Spirit and speaking in tongues. But my way, I went straight to the source. God had actually light up my candle, okay? And then now I go lighting everybody else. So that's two ways God light um, the candles light or conceive with the Holy Spirit. You can go directly to God if you know if you don't have any source around you. A uh, born again believer laying their hands on you and pray over you, receiving the baptism of um, a fire, and you should start speaking in tongues. Okay, um, you just let your mouth loose uh, and then pray for the. Um, here's the thing about tongues. Okay, God, this took me several years to understand this. Okay, um, speaking in tongues. God is not an author of confusion. Why does the tongue... Uh, that's why I said that it's better off that you pray in your own language where you can understand. Unless, unless you're cursing God out, you don't know what the Spirit is saying. You see what I mean? You don't know if that is really Holy Spirit or demons. And I've gone through all this, okay? So I have experience in telling you this. So um, I was speaking in tongues. And um, found, come to find out, it's demonic tongues. While there, there is a tongue of God too, okay. So speaking in tongue is actually like channeling. It's it's opening up a, a vessel for the spirit to use you to communicate to you in in physical time, in in a physical tangible world right here. So what happens is if demons can speak to you, God can speak to you. So it's just not you. It's you, God, and the devil. Okay. So you have to have discernment. Okay. Discernment is also a gift. Okay. In Corinthians, from the Holy Spirit. So you know which tongue is yours and which tongue is God and which tongue is the devil, okay? And so what happened is, um, um, speaking in tongues, it starts out, you let your lip go so that uh, the spirit can start using your lips to speak to you, okay? Whether it's demonic or God, it is just letting you know. That there's an entity, just to let you get familiar with the spirit realm, that this is an entity beside yourself, using your lips to speak to you. So, okay, so it starts with our gibberish, gibberish language, okay, every church, okay? And if, if, if you don't have the gift of interpretation of tongue, then you better have, you better pray for it or have somebody have that gift of interpreting what that gibberish is saying. But this is the amazing part, okay? This is... Pay attention. This is the, the gift of speaking in tongues. This is the gift of interpretation. Once you start learning and operating uh, speaking in tongues, and when you submerge it together, it becomes a language where you understand. What do I mean by that? Um, so I understand Vietnamese and English. So the, the Holy Spirit or that demon will start... The interpretation of that tongue would either be English if you're American and no other language because you don't know any other language. So that spirit will speak to you in English. Okay, for me, it can speak English and Vietnamese because that's what I understand. That's the interpretation of tongues. Okay, in a language where you understand. See, that this is where we read and we don't have understanding. And the Bible is very confusing. It's, it's very symbolic, uh, metaphoric. This is why God uh, explained it to me. And uh, the ones that come to God, he will explain it to you. Like, duh, you know. So, um, I start asking God. And so, uh, speaking in tongues. This is how the disciple does it, okay? I'm God's disciple. This is how all the disciple does it. This is how Moses and everybody else talk to God in the same manner, okay? So, um, you would ask, you know, you pray, 
And here's the thing. A lot of people think praying, you ask for things. No. It's a communication. It's, it's, it's talking to God, just like how I'm talking to you. You ask a question, and you receive an answer. It's a back and forth thing. That's how you hear God's voice. That's how you know your mission, okay? So the voice, you just don't try to speak. Don't try to move your lips. You just let it loose. So it can just start moving itself. That you know the Spirit of God is using this lip to talk to you. And let you know where you're at. And sometimes, I'm going to be real. Sometimes demons come through. And these are the demons you know that you have sin. That uh, you open the door to let them into your temple. Okay, we are the church. Okay, when God talks about the church, he's not talking about those church out there. He's talking about us being an individual church. The seven church of Philadelphia. I was at the church of Philadelphia. Obviously, it's not a building church because not everybody in that building is saved. Not every, I'm at, just, just think. Not all, not, not, not even one church, like physical church that all the members get saved. No. Okay, the majority might of them might get saved. People come in and out, so it cannot possibly talking about physical church, the church of um, the seven um, church of Revelation. Okay, this is talking about individual. We are the temple. We are the church. And who is the high priest? Jesus, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. That's why Scripture says, "Call nobody teacher. Call body no um, father, because one's the Christ." You see what I mean? Catholic, they love to call those people father. And teacher or rabbi, 